Good morning, everybody. It's been a great pleasure for me to meet you again in our English program. Last week, we discussed about present modal verbs of deduction. And today, we are going to continue with the new one. It's about past modal verbs of deduction. And the goals of our learning for today are Students can search, access, and find written information in conversation or listening related to the topic of out of the past and identify the function of the past model verbs of deduction. For learning resources and learning media, we use today Elevator Book Grade 12, page 45 and 46, Unit 7, School Channel YouTube Learning Videos, Discord or media chat and interactive discussion, WhatsApp or Zoom. For Pancasila student profile as character assessment that you guys must achieve are as follows. First, be devoted to God Almighty and have noble character. Second, global diversity. Third, independent. Fourth, reason critically. Fifth, creative. And sixth, mutual cooperation. Well, now we come to the discussion. Past Model Verbs of Deduction To speculate about past events, we can use must or must not, may or may not, might or might not, can or cannot, and could or could not, followed by have plus past participle. Please pay attention to the following example. Anita speaking. Where's Jay? He's late and we need to leave for party. Brian speaking. He must have forgotten about the party. Christine speaking. He could, might, may have gone to football practice. Neon speaking. He could, might, may not realize how late it was. Eric speaking. He can't have remembered the party. Might and could can also be used with this structure to talk about a past event that was possible but didn't happen. Please pay attention to the following example. Don't climb on that wall again. You could have fallen off and hurt yourself. I can't believe you left the letter on the table. Jack might have found it. Conclusion for you. Please pay attention to the following slides. time to practice to upgrade your English skill please do the following exercises Transcript 7.2 So, can you tell me how old these things are? Well, we believe they date from around 1000 BC. And are there a lot of them? Well, to date, we've found about 900, and we think there are many more buried in various places. And are they all similar? Yes, they are. They all represent a head and upper body. Originally, they would have had eyes made of coral, 
but these have nearly all disappeared now. They're still very impressive, though. And do you know what they were for? Well, that's a good question. Transcript 7.3 I think the main thing to remember is that it must have been a monumental task to erect the statues. Yes, it would be, even with today's technology. Yes, that's right. Well, it's easy to belittle their achievement, but of course, everything was done by hand. It must have taken a very long time to carve each one, and then a lot of time to move them. So they were obviously there for a serious reason. Hmm, that's fascinating. Nowadays, we think that the statues may have represented powerful chiefs. People might have believed that the statues would capture the chief's supernatural powers and protect them, and bring rain for the crops and so on. So they had a, a religious purpose? Yes, they could have had. And what happened to the people who carved them? Their society? Well, that's the question everyone wants the answer to. There have been various theories over the years. Various theories? Uh, yes. The first explorers, for example, they thought that the statues couldn't have been built by the inhabitants at all. They thought they must have been built by an earlier, more sophisticated society that then disappeared. And that's not true? No, that theory has been disproved over the years, as has the belief that the people who carved the statues actually caused an environmental disaster, that they cut down all the trees and destroyed the wildlife and therefore couldn't survive. So why don't people believe that theory now? Well, there was certainly a lot of change to the environment, but we think that society could have adapted. Environmental change alone can't have destroyed their society. Now, nowadays, the predominant theory is that the biggest disaster for the people of Easter Island was probably the arrival of Europeans. Really? So what happened exactly? Well, the Europeans didn't foresee the impact that their new foreign diseases would have on the islanders. It's highly likely that the indigenous people had no immunity to these diseases and were totally besieged by them. The Europeans also enslaved most of the adult males, effectively destroying the population and social structure on the island. Finally, thank you very much for your attention. We'll meet again in another lesson. Have a nice day and goodbye.